I wanted to do a quick video about some of the assertions I've been hearing about what's going on on college campuses. Many people claim that the draconian policies of college campuses have got to be benefiting these kids and have got to be slowing the spread of SARS-CoV-2. And what I want to say is, you have no credible evidence that that's the case. Now, let's talk about the most draconian policy. In my opinion, the most draconian policy is Duke University. They are gone so far as to mandate outdoor masking of college kids. Now, we know at this point in the pandemic that even an unvaccinated population, outdoor masking is probably not going to do a whole lot because outdoor spread is the lowest instance of spread for this virus. But if you take a vaccinated young population and you do outdoor masking, you really are irrational. You're really running counter to any credible science. Your policy is draconian for the sake of being draconian. If anything, that policy might cut the other way. It might actually have negative implications because kids will burn out and they'll be unwilling to do other things. And they'll view all of this as a pointless theater. But one of the claims that I have made uh, that I think is factually the case is that we just don't have credible evidence that the policies of many of these universities like Stanford, Brown, and Duke were asymptomatic young adults who have been vaccinated are screened for SARS-CoV-2 with weekly or bi-weekly spit or nasopharyngeal testing, that that slows the spread of SARS-CoV-2. Now, put aside the goal of the policy. I think, and I have a piece out now, an op-ed and MedPage today, that we might be mistaken into thinking that right goal of the policy is to slow the spread of SARS-CoV-2. It's an endemic virus. It's inevitable. We're all going to come in contact with it. The best we can do is to harm reduce, is to lower the chances of bad outcomes when you come into contact with it. But put that aside. Let's say the goal is just to slow the spread of the virus. There is really no credible evidence that these policies, this asymptomatic screening, does slow the spread of the virus. It's plausible that that might be the case, but it isn't proven that that is the case. And it's also plausible that it might not work. It might not even slow the spread of the virus. The history of medicine is riddled with practices that someone thought was plausible that turned out not to work. And if you want a summary of those things, I'd recommend a book called Ending Medical Reversal. It's literally a summary of those topics. So what are my thoughts here? If you were a real scientist and not um, someone who merely wishes to promote this policy, but a real scientist, you'd want to study if this policy, which is costly and cumbersome, actually slows the spread of the virus. And the way you would do it is assign groups of, of college kids either a single dormitory or some floors in a dormitory or some groups of them across many college campuses to this asymptomatic screening or not. And to ask, what is the rate of SARS-CoV-2, perhaps symptomatic SARS-CoV-2 in those communities? So symptoms leading to testing. So if you're in a control pocket where you're not getting screened asymptomatically every week, if you have a symptom, you'll get free access to testing. And if you're in a group that's getting screened asymptomatically every week, when you come down with a symptom, you'll get tested, confirmed you have SARS-CoV-2, and we'll document that as the endpoint. And I think it's plausible that this asymptomatic screening doesn't even improve that endpoint of symptomatic SARS-CoV-2. That might not even be what we want. We wish we had more power and we could power it for hospitalizations from SARS-CoV-2 or some severe outcomes or hospitalizations in the broader community. But this would be a start. And I think there's a huge pushback against doing this. That's what I find so fascinating, that many of the people who are the most ardent advocates of this asymptomatic screening, which is bizarre, these are young vaccinated people, may themselves be consulting for some of these testing companies and doing some modeling that supports the use of these products without empirical evidence that that's the case. That, in my mind, would be problematic. But the bigger, I think, silliness of this whole thing is the moment you go outside of these college campuses, no one is following any of these precautions, and if anything, they are much more lax in their precautions. And the other thing I would say is, which are the colleges that have been able to implement this? It's not going to be a state university. It's not going to be a community college. They tend to be the elite institutions with big endowments. Why? Because they have the money for this. And who are they catering to? Are they really catering to public health, or are they catering to the anxieties of the parents and donors? And that is what I worry to be the case. So I guess I'm struggle with this whole issue of all the things we ought to be doing about SARS-CoV-2 in this moment, and there are many things we could do, taking a highly vaccinated cohort of young adults who are destined to come in contact with this virus over the course of the next decade, and policing their behavior to such great lengths as to ban parties, to ban indoor dining, to prevent them from spending time with more than two or three of their friends, to make them wear masks outside, to prevent them from taking a sip of a coffee in a lecture hall. These are very draconian things done upon the youngest members of society, young adults, 
that probably is not going to benefit anybody in the broader community and probably is just going to inconvenience and hurt these young adults. And if you believe that it does slow the spread of SARS-CoV-2 at the college campus, you could conduct a cluster randomized control trial to try to support that claim. Although I think the appetite for that is very low because why would a company seek to test their product in a randomized study when they can already get the market share by getting the universities to pay for it now? And that's the situation we're in. So when I see claims like we know screening asymptomatic people is of benefit, I, I puzzle with that claim because we don't know any such thing. We just don't know that to be true. And real scientists would admit that we don't know that to be true and that there are methods we could get closer to the truth and not to simply debut a costly, expensive, cumbersome test. I think I'm not the only one frustrated by this. My inbox is filling, filling with college students, graduate students, people who are clever, who realize that this seems quite absurd and they point out to other absurdities in their lives. And uh, we, we hope to take a deeper, deeper look into these issues. So, you know what to do if you like this video, like, subscribe, comment below, leave a message. I'm critical of this policy. I am skeptical of it. I want to see some evidence that it actually does something and I don't want to hear any more people assert blindly and without data that it's guaranteed to slow the spread of the virus. I don't think that's true. I can debate even if that's the goal in and of itself, but accepting that that's the goal, I wonder if this actually accomplishes that goal or if it's merely theater like outdoor masking is theater. And I think, um, you know, I'd be embarrassed to be recommending a policy of outdoor cloth masking with what we know today in 2021. I mean, that's just simply bad policy. It makes people feel frustrated and it doesn't actually solve any problems. So on that positive note, until next time.